We are now going live with the drone over racing magpie. So thank you everybody for a great morning. Hi, uh, I am Peter Strong of Racing Magpie. And I'm Mary Bordeaux of Racing Magpie. And we just uh, wanted to say hi to the South Dakota Arts Conference and welcome you to our space in a virtual format. Um, we're doing our best to, to uh, maintain social distancing and, and keep everyone healthy. So we're, we're doing this by zoom and uh, just like everybody is and we're excited to have you here once it's safe um we just we wanted to talk a little bit about our what racing magpie is and what we do and i think i don't know mary do you want to just talk a little about how we came to be just real real quick yeah so um i guess i should have said as part of my introduction i'm an enrolled member um, of the Rosebud Sioux Tribe and have lived um, on the Pine Ridge Reservation um, for almost my whole life. I've been living here in Rapid City now for seven years. Um, and when I moved to Rapid City, I was working for the Heritage Center at Red Cloud Indian School um, and then went on to work for another institution. Um, but in that time, we, there, I felt this need or we felt this need and pull to have a space um, for artists to connect and for community to connect and be together. And um, so, you know, that's kind of the really quick <laughs> um, sentence about, you know, racing my pie and, um, but so we, um, just, you know, there was a lot of like just happenstances. Um, Peter um, met with, just happened to run into the landlords of our building and we were getting ready to, um, we were looking for space for Racing Magpie. And our hope in the beginning was, you know, to be, a, to be able to do, um, to be consultants and then um, to have a native art gallery um, that was focused on contemporary modern art, I guess you could say, um, but a space for artists to display art and exhibit it in a way that wasn't confined by um, romanticized views of Native people. And um, 
and then Peter met the landlords, our landlords, and they had a much bigger space and our ideas about racing magpie started to grow. And um, we included art, we, um, yeah, included artist studios and um, classroom space and um, more industrial type space um, where you could do like dirtier art is what Peter always says. But, and so um, that's Those louder and dirtier artists, right? What's that, Peter? Those louder and dirtier artists. Yeah, <laughs> the most fun ones, maybe. <laughs> um, but so that's kind of where Racing Magpie has um, kind of been through in the past um, five years, five and a half years. Um, yeah, thanks. And, and I would just add, you know, now what what you could have seen before the pandemic hit in March when we shut down to protect our community was we did end up with a contemporary native gallery that we've we've hung um, Mary's curated some original exhibits with native artists ranging from painters to um, performance artists and um, we've traveled exhibits around the country um, from starting from our gallery and then we we've had you know, up to 20 artists renting um, affordable studios. So they're here and they're working. We have native and non-native artists in studios and um, really flexible community space. We found that the community has a lot of, especially our Lakota community here in Rapid, had a lot of needs to come together around culture and um, our community let us know what they needed. So we, we really were flexible and worked with them um, and now that we've been closed um, we pivoted very quickly in March and we were able to offer some virtual programming um, because artists are still here you all know <laughs> the artists are here and doing incredible things and we wanted to figure out a way to just bring some more attention and keep people connected and uh, so we did these virtual residencies. We've done two rounds of those this summer. Um, what else, Mary? We, we, um, We're we starting the um, winter camp yeah. series, um, which is also a virtual event. I think we're, we'll end up having, I think the country will end up having a lot of more virtual events similar to the arts conference um, and our winter camp for the next, um, six months or foreseeable future. Um, and so we started the winter camp series um, and kind of had, they're a little bit longer events um, with different culture bearers and our knowledge carriers. Um, and we've already had, um, maybe Peter, you can elaborate on the folks that we've already had. Yeah, so we started, we kicked off the first kind of the inaugural um, pilot winter of winter camp, which the whole goal is for Lakota to create a, a, a platform for Lakota people to, to share and for those knowledge carriers, culture bearers to pass knowledge along during the long cold winter that we have. So we had Joseph Marshall, the, the very famous um, writer and um, culture bearer. I can't think of all the things that I've seen him do, but he did some really amazing presentations on colonization and the effects on Lakota community culture. Uh, and then in October, <coughs> we had some poetry workshops with Larie and um, John Gozen Center and James Sinovia did a really cool presentation about uh, this, this kind of um, crossroads of traditional knowledge of land or Lakota knowledge of land and place and the world around us and new technologies. So um, GPS and um, LIDAR and all these mapping technologies. So that was really cool. And we're, we're getting close to announcing November's uh, and we'll have those going through the winter all around this idea of building community around arts and culture. They'll be available. They're also available on our YouTube. The yes. residencies are there as well, um, where the artists checked in and um, yeah. 
Yep. <laughs> I'm, I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah, it's all there. It's on Facebook and on YouTube. We also, I think the last thing I remember is we, we partnered with the Cave Collective here in Rapid City and we put on a six hour live stream um, where we featured visual artists and musicians from around the, the Black Hills area. Um, and that that's all online as well. It was really cool. There's so many great people in the community being so creative. So um, that was a fun project and we keep, we're working on more of those. We're, we're, we still offer consulting services and um, are just here to make our, hopefully support our community and being better and stronger. And, um, being connected, especially during this time, um, you know, it, it's hard for us all to be apart, especially for some of us in community that um, find strength um, when we're together. And I think it's important that we um, do our best to social distance um, and so that we can, so we're all here at the end of this, yeah. So um, I hope um, that this conference has like, helped your heart during this time um, and helped you feel connected to each other um, and that Racing My Pie will continue with our online presence and virtual presence um, to continue supporting each other. Yep, thanks Mary. And, and just, yeah, thank you all for joining. I think you'll get to to hear from a couple of the artists who are doing amazing things in Racing Magpie, and you'll get to see some visuals of the space. Um, and when this is all, when it's safe, we hope to see you here and um, good luck with everything and take care of yourselves and each other. And uh, I think we'll see you soon. Thanks. Good morning, everybody from Racing Magpie in Rapid City. Uh, my name is Dwayne Wilcox. I'm, a, I'm an artist here, past recipient of Governor's Awards and here in South Dakota. I've uh, been here at Racing Magpie for like uh, five years since its, since its beginning. And this is a place where I do most of my work. Uh, most of my big stuff comes out of here. I started painting the, the images that you see behind me probably about a year ago. I'm really known for my ledger art from the past and some three-dimensional paper art. Some of you might have seen that in some of the exhibits around South Dakota at either Red Cloud or down at Okta and Chamberlain. Um, I've been an artist for a little over 30 years. I really want to say 35 years, but that makes me sound old. So I don't really want to say that. I'm an enrolled member of the Oglala Lakota people. And uh, I, I grew up and lived in Wombly, South Dakota, my early years and uh, spent a lot of time traveling around. My wife was career military. So her and I uh, had a nice I guess, tour of duty together. And I was able to take my artwork and do some research on my own in places that we've been to. So I felt like I got some experience out there in the world and came home and, and tried to build my career from home here. And I have had some success. It's been, um, it is what it is. If you're an artist, there's, there's good times, there's bad times but uh, we're all in it for the love of the art, not, not the, uh, I guess the economy is what it is when you're an artist. Other than that, there's um, a lot of venues that are closed this year. So it's an awkward year, I know for everybody, even during this, this, uh, this broadcast today is uh, different for me. So I, I don't have any questions being shot at me or anything, so I'm, I'm just uh, shooting from the hip today. So uh, hopefully I could answer some uh, questions that you might be wondering about me, I guess. Uh, I, I think I pretty much covered it. I, I'm you know a father of two, grandfather of four. So I got that going on. That's kind of exciting. 
teach them a little bit what I know about art and uh, try not to be too much of an art teacher or critic. Uh, other than that, it's just uh, a lot of Zoom meetings these days. Uh, so, some uh, just, uh, I guess we're all trying to bear through this stuff. So uh, as an artist, you're sitting there, you don't really have a venue to create your work to, to deposit it in. So a lot of it is, uh, you know, online uh, to view your work. So uh, just in the middle of... Oh, yeah. Well, Peter was asking me about the inspiration behind some of the work behind me. Uh, I, I Like I said, I, I did a lot of ledger work and uh, basically my ledger palette of colors was basically a breakdown of about 12 different colors. So the uh, paintings behind me, uh, I had a chance to use <laughs> more color so and bigger because I was used to working on everything about 11 by 17. These are 40 six by uh, 64 and uh, they're just uh, some of the work that uh, that I've been putting off and I've been wanting to paint for so many years and a lot of it is just a kind of a cubist style but it's not really a cubist style it's just something that I kind of um, uh, I don't know I I, may, I I found a place where I don't have to worry about body shapes or sizes or colors or correctness of form. So it was nice to make an abstract of that form. So that's kind of where I wanted to be, where I can kind of go back to where I be the beginning when I first started painting, geez, uh, 30 years ago. But uh, these are a little bit different and I try to use some techniques and trying to build something that might be <clears throat> something that might be exhibitable someplace down the road. And uh, these are basically some of my first pieces. So I see a lot of things that I could have corrected and improved on, but I like to say this is a growing concept. So hopefully they're developed a little bit better down the road somewhere. But uh, this is the angle I guess I'm going to try to cut with this, this work and uh, continue on trying to trying to develop that a little bit differently. And uh, the pic the pictures I did over this picture over here, <clears throat> it's kind of more or less my ledger style of work. Only thing it's in, in a, on a canvas, it's a just different medium. And it, I like the, the flat art that, uh, that's what drew me to uh, ledger drawings is the flatness, I guess. So I didn't try to put a dimension into it because uh, uh, there's just something uh, that I appreciate about a kind of a folk style of, of work that uh, that uh, really sticks to me, I guess, uh, from from some of the earlier ledger stuff. And uh, this is, I think, the first one that I started with the, to develop the, everything that followed. This was like the first one of, that I felt like it was worthy of being stretched. Uh, I have a lot of them rolled up that I thought were good. And after I kind of developed a little bit better, I decided that there wasn't as good as I thought. So I'd probably just be painting over them at some point, but it's nice to use a lot of different color. And I just, you like the straight color out of the tube. Don't have to mix it or anything. Um, like I said, I'm a self-taught artist. So I don't really have a lot of um, means of, uh, of going into the art school design of uh, what what things I done right and what things I done wrong. I don't think there's any right and wrong in art, but uh, being you know self-taught, you kind of have to learn by execution and sometimes that doesn't develop the way you want it. And uh, thank you for everybody for uh, your ear time and uh, you have a good one. Hey, well, good morning. Uh, uh, my name is John Gosen Center. Uh, 
this is my little studio here in Racing Magpie. Uh, I'll just give you, come on in, come on in. I'm going to sit down here by my favorite place, which is my workbench. You know, sit here by my workbench, but yeah, I, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to just to tell a little bit about what I do, but also uh, let me introduce myself. I'm John Gozen Center. I'm Oglala Lakota. Uh, in all actuality, all actuality, I was born here in Rapid City, and if I look out the window, just about three blocks or four blocks down the down the street, there is a Founders Park and. Founders Park uh, is uh, used to be a, a little Indian community there in back of the old Mother Butler Center, and and that's where I was born in 1949. So I was born at home, born along R Rapid Creek, and but I've had a very eclectic life. You know, I uh, I don't want to say high tech, but I worked at IBM for many years and founded my own consulting company. But but I eventually. Uh, Came back to Rapid City. Here I am, uh, full circle. But uh, within my eclectic career, I've always done artwork in the background of what I what I did as a career. But but anyway, now my artwork's in the forefront, and uh, well, I've had some accolades in my uh, in my endeavors as a, a creative. Somehow, I don't like the word artist, but I like the word creative. So, but yeah, I've learned. Uh, I've mastered engraving. I don't know if you could really see that that piece there, but that's some of the, the engraving I do. This is my engraver machine. It's been rebuilt about four different times, but but I make a dormant. I I don't like the word jewelry, so I'm always inventing new ways to talk about what people wear, you know. So I call it the art of personal adornment. And as a Lakota, I really look deep within my culture and like to say that I'm doing nothing different than my ancestors did. I totally jump back on the creative continuum that my ancestors have always uh, uh, created with, you know, they, they use natural materials. They use things from their, their territory. So what it is I do is uh, my jewelry embodies a lot of the things that uh, are in my culture. Yeah. So shall I wait here or oh okay, well yeah, there's there's guys running around with <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so a lot of things I create with are from the natural world and how I started out as an early creative. I uh, I used to dance a lot when uh, you know the powwow dances and when I was a young boy, so my origin started with uh, modifying my dance outfit and that led to other things. And so within the Lakota paradigm, I've always, you know, kept my work within that paradigm. So, but what I, what I do right now is I, I make personal adornment much in the style of uh, Plains Indian uh, culture, you know, so I, I engrave, I engrave special designs that are somewhat reminiscent of the uh, geometric designs. My ancestors uh, painted on hides and, and such, but I, I have also, um, uh, yeah, I do. So, so if we can look right here, I mean, I do have a little display case. So you, you can see some of my silver work. It's, it's uh, all that's hand engraved and very reminiscent of things in nature like lightning. And you can see that as a, that's a, what I call a spider web. But, but these are some of the stones that come from this area the Fairburn agate, you know, and it's very uh, special to this area. There's no other place in the world that embodies these kind of agates. And so I have right here a lot of my agate jewelry. Uh, there's some of my engraving. There's a bracelet there. And there's a, uh, you know, what, what agates look like. And you find them in the Badlands and the Black Hills. But here I've made a lot of rings, uh, you know, uh, it's just a selection of natural stones and some pendants over here. But importantly, uh, I'm going to show here. Uh, well, you can see here, this, this, these are uh, natural stones. And this is an agate that uh, I use. And this is a little diamond saw here where I slab up uh, nodules from the Black Hills. And inside, you can see uh, 
agate in there. So that that's really what my diamond saw does is slab up these uh, nodules and I'll find pieces in them like that with the pattern and with my, uh, with my, uh, here you can actually see how I grind and So you can see that, that's so, but that's just a, a quick demonstration of, of where my, where my, how I create things. And that becomes products like this, which are cabochons that are, uh, you know, these are all from South Dakota, Western South Dakota, you know, so that, that, that goes into my jewelry. So, but I'll say I'm probably one of a few artists that actually use utilize the, the natural stones in the western part of South Dakota. These are the Fairburn agates, you know, so that's one thing I can say is my stuff is unique in a sense that I utilize things from the Lakota homeland. So if you just do a pan, you'll see some of my equipment. I have a Durston roller, which I'm really proud of because I can emboss metal. Over here is my engraver. Uh, you can see my wood stump. I've had that for many years where I have some of my tools and also tools hanging up there. Uh, my workbench, <laughs> you know, so, but this is really my, my world. I mean, I, I live here in Rapid City, but I, I come down here every day, you know. Uh, a lot of people don't really know about the, the uh, Lakota uh, jewelry that's been, uh, sort of inspired by the Southern Plains jewelers, uh, the Pawnee, the Kiowa, all those, they, they were very instrumental in working and making their style of jewelry, which spun off to the Northern Plains. So I'm just, like I said, jumping back on that continuum to uh, uh, make personal dormant in the paradigm of Plains Indians, you know. Uh, so that, that's about it for what, I, what, I, what I'm doing. And uh, you can find me here at Racing Magpie, or I do have a website, www.lakotajewelry.com. So, yeah, check it out. And if you see something in there that you like, I do custom work. I, I, that's not so much I create a lot of inventory to sell. I just do and really relish doing custom work. So I do want to thank you.